Welcome to the second live show of the Literally Good Book Club for 2022. We're talking about The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. Going to- <laughs> what if I like passed it up to Chanel and it actually came up? Oh, God. <laughs> we, should, we should plan something like that in the future to happen. That would be so funny. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, I'm joined here by three lovely co-hosts that I'm going to have introduced themselves. Um, this is actually, they're all returning co-hosts. Bree, this is her third time. This is Meg's fourth time, Chanel's fifth time. And I invited oh, wow. them all, I know, Look for different us. reasons. I didn't even we, know it was my third time. So <laughs> I'm like, sis, what have I been reading? <laughs> You're the returning member the most. Um, We all have very different experiences with Lucy Foley, which is why I invited each person here, and I think that'll make for a fun discussion. Um, So what I want you to do to introduce yourselves is just tell me your channel, um, anything like upcoming soon that you want to promote. I think this would be a good opportunity for that, or like a recent video you posted. And if you have any new favorite thrillers, I always ask my co-host that, but I know that you've all been here pretty recently. Um, So if you have anything new to share, I'd love to hear about that. And while they're doing that, um, send me a little emoji in the comments, a little heart if you read the book, and a skull if you didn't, or you DNF'd it. So I'd love to gauge what's going on here. Okay. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Chanel, and my channel is Chanel Time. Also, that's my bookstagram, which I am way more active on. Typically, when I was like making YouTube videos, it was literally anything. Like I read thrillers, contemporaries, nonfiction all sorts of things. I am working on coming back this year. Now that grad school is over mm-hmm. and I'm life doesn't suck waiting. anymore, right? So like working on coming back. So probably we'll be starting Bookstagram first. I'm trying to think of some series and things. So if you love, you know, focusing on certain authors and then reading all their works, which I did last year, and it was super fun with Gillian Flynn and Riley Sager, that was a moment. So if you love stuff like that, come to me. And then favorite thrillers, right? Mm-hmm. I love anything that Jillian Flynn writes. Like, oh, she just writes the most insufferable characters. So I love her work. I feel um, the same. Right. 2021 was kind of a disappointing thriller year for me. So I don't have anything that really stood out that was amazing. Ooh. The 22 Murders of... Mm, let me look it up. The 22 Murders <laughs> of Madison May. Oh, oh my wow. goodness. By Max Barry, B-A-R-R-Y. It's like a science spec, science fiction speculative thriller. When I And I read that with Monet. When I tell you we were gasping. <laughs> like <laughs> I recognize the cover. Oh my God, it was so good. I think the month I read that, I only read two books. And I could not stop thinking about that book. It's so good. Oh. <gasps> I just I have flashbacks of my screen. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's it for me. <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Bree. My channel is Life Optician. Um, I I think that I'm an active booktuber. I try to post at least once a week. Um, I do different things. And for the love of me, I cannot recall anything that I'm doing. <laughs> Because I hate doing this so much. So I'm talking about myself in this result, this, uh, you know, whatever. Um, what I got coming up? Don't know. I know I have some stuff coming up, but I'm literally throwing a blank is happening here. Um, favorite thriller? I've been reading a lot of Tanana Reeve Do. Um, I just read The Between. And that really took me on a roller class, a roller coaster of my life. Oh, thank you for reminding me, Maya. I do have a book club. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> for getting to- <laughs> it's a hot mess up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, okay. Um, I do have a book club, uh, Black Classics. We read Black Ooh. Classics. We make it more accessible for people. We usually read it on the last day of the month. We'll be reading... Um, to be young, gifted, and black. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Um, by our girl Lorraine Hansberger. 
Um, we'll be reading that on Tuesday. So we, I think I've done it almost a year now, every month. So if anyone wants to read Black Classics, they are super accessible and you can do that. I do other things too, but I cannot think of anything, uh, but I know <laughs> I do other things. So that's what I'm going to say. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Megan from Meg with Bex, and I hate doing this too. I hate trying to, <laughs> like, like, I hate trying to promote myself. Like I don't know what to say. Um, okay, okay, okay. So I do a mix of reading vlogs on my channel, like themed reading vlogs, reaction videos. I have a TBR game called TBR Cluedo. Um, I read a lot of mystery, fantasy. They're probably my two main genres. Mm -hmm. um, what can I promote? Oh, okay. So tonight I've got a really exciting video going up, everyone. Just I'll give everyone the top secret news. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, like an hour after this, I've got a video going up where I paid some of my favorite drag queens on Cameo to get a Cameo video from them telling me what their favorite book is. And then I've read oh. the books in the vlog. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, um, I love that. So that's my promo for that. Everyone watch it in like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so um, is that why you're reading that cursed book that i hate oh listen read it <laughs> I, I won't spoil my reaction but honestly mm -hmm. horrific horrific <laughs> i won't spoil my reaction but horrific <laughs> five stars five stars <laughs> i'm guessing it's five stars <laughs> oh um and then oh thrill is i've oh thrill i've read recently i well i read it at the start of the year but as good as dead by holly jackson it's the last mm. in the a good girl's guide to murder series and mm. it is one of the most like oh my god if you've read no exit think like ya no exit in terms of like how sick and horrible it makes you feel like it's so oh, tense and no crazy exit. it's it was very very good so i'll say that as my answer for that ah. Interesting. Okay. Um, there are so many comments. I feel like this might be the most people we've ever had participate oh, wow. in a book club. Uh, thank you so much for all being here. I would love to see you all keep this energy for our <laughs> April selection, Black <gasps> Debut Thriller, Ooh. All Her Little Secrets. I Listen, I read it. I have many thoughts. I'm going to be in the comments. Oh I'm my so God. <laughs> let, me, let me remember to add that right now because oh, I a little longer. I think I've only ever missed one read from this book club and I'm not trying oh to have God. that happen again. This <laughs> book takes you it's some twists. It's some turns. You understand? It's it's wow. giving. It's giving. So excited. And um you guys can all look forward to probably two weeks from now, an announcement for the next three months of Literally Good Book Club. So that'll be exciting. Yes. Um, okay, so we're talking about the Paris apartment, which I'm gonna have Brie pitch to us in just a second. Um, Cause it's been the longest, the person who hasn't been here for the longest is Brie. So that's her mm -hmm. um, punishment or reward. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel like it's because I'm taller than you, but I'll let it go. <laughs> oh, the other day I found out that me and Bria are almost the same height. And I have yes. been thinking about it for literally since the moment I found out. <laughs> literally. I was like, mother, I have found another tall black woman. <laughs> so, Listen, sorry, if Bria, go you, on. If you saw, um, if you saw, sorry, I was putting the link to some for in the chat, but um, my cousin, I love her. My first cousin, Ashley, is six mm. seven. I hate being oh, around wow. her. I'd be like, really, Ashley? This is how you feel? <laughs> She'd be like, oh, little Brie. And I'd be like, oh. <laughs> I do hate being shorter around other people because I'm not I used do. to it. Right. Like, I mean, is, is this how it feels? <laughs> <laughs> No. I'll look forward to your meetup so I can see a photo of you two side by side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, Brie, carry on with your summary. My bad. <laughs> okay. okay. I forgot about it for a second. Okay. So the summary is this We follow characters. Do I know names? <laughs> Let me look real quick. Yes. So Jess is going through a struggle. And she said, I'm going to go tell at my brother. It's a stepbrother, half brother, somebody—not full brother, but a brother, right? 
So she goes and said, I'm going to go holla at him in Paris, right? And while she's in Paris, she realized the math is not mathing. <laughs> Why? Because the man is missing. So she's trying to figure out who are the suspects in this apartment? How do y'all know each other? What is your relationship to my brother? Why is he not returning my calls? Amen. So she goes to try to find this man and this this odd guy, try to help her on this quest of figuring out who he is. But every time he do some, she like noted. That's a clue. Noted. That's a clue. But she don't know that it's more insidious behind the layers of what's going on in this apartment. Then you got this grandma, who's my favorite character. <laughs> peep, 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 watching everything, right? And then you got this little girl who we know got some mental health issues that ain't so great, okay? So we are just trying to figure out how can we help Jess figure out what happened to her brother? Is her brother dead? Is he alive? Is he injured? We don't know. We are trying to get the cool, the clues to the puzzle to make it make sense. Because again, the math ain't math. It. And it's our job to figure out if two plus two really gonna equal four. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so kindly. Um, Terrible. Uh, <laughs> I was like, what happened? <laughs> you just went with it and you killed it. And I love it. Now I want to read it again. You made it sound more interesting than it was. <laughs> Not to spoil my thoughts. Okay, who? I just let out a, a breath I didn't know was holding. <laughs> okay. Uh, I always <laughs> look <at> my <laughs> As always, I don't know what anybody rated the book. I don't know any thoughts. I don't look at anything. I know nothing. So this is your moment in the comments to let us know what your rating was. Was it good? Was it bad? I feel like we might be all over the place. Um, and before we get into spoilers, I thought it'd be fun to see if you could give me you could give me your review in three words. Sum up the book in in just three words with your rating. That's what I would like. Chanel, what's your rating? Tell me. I'm scared. I give this book a two and a half stars. <laughs> and if I could describe it, well, let me double check the Paris apartment. <laughs> let me get my third graph right now. <laughs> I thought those yeah, were two and words. a half stars. <laughs> and if I could describe it in three words, I am snoring. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> That's the swab dripping from the <laughs> Look, I have my reasons and mm -hmm. I will explain because I there was a moment where I would have been like higher, like way higher. And then I sat and I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. All right. Also, to the turn. person who asked if I'm doing well, no, I'm not. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Carry on. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have not rated it anything. Uh, if I can say it in three words, a hot mess. Um, but I have not rated anything because I'm reserving. I'm reserving the rating. Um, I couldn't even tell you where I would kind of throw it. I wouldn't put it at a five and I wouldn't put it at a four. That's what I will say. Okay. I wouldn't put it at a four or a five. Um, at first, like Chanel, I was a little in the beginning and then I felt like it picked up for me. Yeah. Um, but then I realized I can't read another Lucy Foley. Like this it for me. Like I can't, I think I'm going to have to really head out because I'm, I'm realizing my first Lucy Foley, my thought of her writing this it's the same it's giving what i thought about in the previous um don't hate me and don't at me at your mama y'all <laughs> um, r.i.p if she did oh. sorry about that r.i.p if she uh no longer with us but at your mama <laughs> what I really is i just really don't like how she write her male characters they piss me off to the they're just super 
misogynistic, abusive of women. And not saying I, you don't get that in Thriller, but there's just something a bit about how she writes her male characters that I want to, you know, take her in the street for a second and have a talk with her in the alley. That was my question, Bob. Megan? Mm-mm. I don't even want to talk. I don't even want to talk. I, like I want to give this book like 12 stars because <laughs> I feel like our our reading tastes are either like very similar or the opposite. That's something I've noticed about me and Megan. I'm either like, oh yeah, period. Or I'm like, oh, were we even reading the same book? So I want to hear um, this. Yeah. Yeah. So I gave it five stars. Okay. <gasps> um, I don't want anyone to talk to me about it. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm so happy for you. Um, <laughs> I can't even just no. when I where do I begin to justify myself? Um okay, um I got to even know what to say. <laughs> okay, here. Order in the court, Megan's moment. <laughs> you, don't to, you don't have to give us everything, just your three words. <laughs> well, uh, are you guys going to judge me? I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> My three words. I can't even say it. I can't even say it because of my my three words were she gets it because <laughs> Lucy Foley gets what I want. And that's OK. That's OK. <laughs> I like a simple, campy <laughs> mystery. That's a bit ridiculous. That's a bit over the top. That's. <laughs> like a bit like you know silly I really like how she writes her characters I feel like Lucy Foley does a great job okay let me not I'm not gonna get into a thing but I'm just gonna say it in my opinion it's a great job of <laughs> Brie listen 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 I feel listen, the same right now Listen, there's a great job of writing shitty people who don't think they're shitty I feel like I've met people okay. like so many people in like particularly i mean the guest list for example is obviously like british people posh rich british people who are shitty but who don't think they are and that is what i think she's very good at doing and i have other thoughts but we'll get into them and i'm gonna i'm gonna save myself but yes i gave it five stars i am am happy for you like that's a good thing this is the perfect (laughs) it's not a fun time when everybody in the live show doesn't like a bug so like (laughs) This is best case scenario that you loved it. You don't. I hope don't feel like you have to defend it. Like the comments are on your side. It's it's a total mix. So there's someone for everyone. Uh, I, I gave it. I gave it a two. Um, <laughs> it wasn't sure just it. No. Yesterday when Lala was going live reading, and I said, "Have you started the Paris apartment?" I was like, "Cause we always have identical." I did almost identical thoughts and ratings. I was like, I can't wait. <laughs> I almost gave it a three. I was I was going back and forth between a two and a three. And when I was writing down all the questions I was preparing for this live show, I was like, that is too generous. Three? Too generous. <laughs> can't do it. Um, I didn't I didn't hate it. I really didn't hate it. But now this is like two book club books in a row that I've given two stars. And I'm sad. And I hope it goes up from here. Um, my three words are too many characters. Yes. 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 I have the opposite no. opinion. I have the opposite. Oh, okay, yes, I want to hear. I thought Sophie was Josh and Rachel was Megan and Megan was <laughs> Alabaster and Alabaster was like, who? I felt me, so me, bad. Me, me. I hated like, it. I, I agree with Megan about Lucy being able to write like terrible characters and I don't know if it's like a British humor thing because mm. like I have a lot of British family so when I read the guest list I was like oh it's clicking for real mm. but then when I read this book I was like oh it's not clicking <laughs> at all and I felt bad because I was comparing I don't know if anyone's I I'm pretty sure we've all read but I'm not sure like Ruth Ware books mm-hmm but like Ruth Ware always has a ton of characters, but they're all really easy to distinguish. But then this, I just kept comparing and I was like, there's who's who and why are they all in love with the same person? What's going on? Like, uh, her brother and all the men sounded the same. They're one person to me. I'm sorry. They're one person. 
Oh, Meg, I feel so bad because now we're just like shitting on your favorite book. Like that doesn't feel good. Okay, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't my favorite. Like it was like a soft five star for me. Like it wasn't like oh, the, it's probably like my lowest five star if that's a thing mm -hmm. that I've had so far this year. So it wasn't like as good. It wasn't nearly as good as the guest list for me. But mm -hmm. I just like I just really enjoyed the experience of reading it. I feel like Lucy Foley just kind of writing what I want. I just feel like she's out here doing it for mystery in like the mainstream and I appreciate it. But in terms of the characters, I actually felt completely different because the two thrillers I had read before this, I think, were Survive the Night, okay, and rock, rock, Paper, Scissors, um, rock, Paper, Scissors, which both of them have such a small cast, like, oh. like three characters. And so in those cases, it's like, it's obvious. It's obvious at the end who, who it is, who's the bad, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I just felt like in this one, I want, I want your key group of suspects in a, like a mystery to be like six people at least, because I feel mm -hmm. like that's how many you need to really be like, who's who, what's going on, who can I suspect? Otherwise it's too easy and too obvious for me. So it's, I mm. like the amount of characters because of that. But maybe because it was in direct opposition to disliking Survive the Night and Rock, Paper, Scissors for having so few. I'm scared because that's next on my TBR. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Rock, Paper, Scissors. And I thought Survive the Night was like Riley's worst book. Yeah. It was giving rent. Yeah. So that was the rent book. <laughs> okay, we lost Brie. I, I think she'll I'm sure right. she'll pop back in. Yeah. Oh, I can hear her though. <laughs> yeah, I think um, she's refreshing. Okay. Um, I want to know before we get into spoilers, she'll pop back in. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to know, I want to know everyone's favorite perspective. And my first question was just generally like, did you like the amount of perspectives which we're already kind of into? And who was your favorite perspective to read from if you had one? I liked the, see, the characters are really blending. So maybe you guys will be able to tell me who. But the one guy that was her brother's friend, mm. I liked his perspective because, Nick. yeah, that could be his name. I'll agree. <laughs> 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 but I like his perspective because I remember him being like, like he thought he was a good person how he was like describing his friend, all of this, but he was like involved in this situation. You mm. know what I mean? So I really thought his perspective was interesting, especially as a friend, like knowing this person and kind of knowing of his sister, you know? So that mm. was the one character. And also the mom, the, yeah. the stepmom. I thought her, her part was so juicy. Mm. That was, that was juicy. That was juicy to me. So I appreciated her character. Brie, mm -hmm. did you have a favorite perspective to read from? We're not in spoilers yet, just a reminder. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay, because I think I got a boost mobile connection. Something <laughs> happened. <laughs> okay. Um, my favorite perspective, uh, I don't think I have a favorite. I just wasn't really attached to any of them. The most creepy was Mimi to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I found her to just, I just hated when her perspective came because she was like, oh, I need this for my, you know, professor. And I thought he would love it. And then when I sent it to his wife, his wife got upset. <laughs> and it's like, girl, you cut it up. And you just like, of course, like, you know, so I, I, I couldn't quite get with certain things that Mimi Mimi did, but I also understood it, but she was like the most interesting of the characters to me. Did any of you listen to the audiobook? I did. Mm -hmm. okay. Mimi was uh, Mimi was the most like uncomfortable for me to read. Like, yeah. She just, the narrator made me feel weird. <laughs> Yeah. Well, for me, Mimi was my favorite character, favorite perspective, actually, mm -hmm. because I really liked the audiobook narrator. I liked the uncomfiness. Mm -hmm. That's fair. I felt like reading from her perspective was like, you know, when you're in a plane for too long and your ears just get really stuffy <laughs> and you, you're just like, I don't, I don't know if anyone's going to understand what I'm talking about, but like when you've been on a plane for too long and your head is just like, ugh, but you can't <laughs> get rid of the feeling. So you just have to sit with it. If anyone knows what I'm talking about, that's how I felt when I was reading Mimi's perspective. I was like, <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> so, but she was definitely really creepy. 
I think my favorite perspective was probably the concierge, though I wanted more from her. Mm. Like, she's the one who intrigued me because we got so little and she was just like this overseeing kind of voice. Mm. Um, but I wanted it to turn into a little bit more. Um, mm. My issue with the amount of characters isn't so much like how many perspectives we got. Because um, like, I'm happy with the, I think, it was it five or six? Mm-hmm. We had Jess, yeah. Sophie, Nick, the concierge, and Mimi for five. Um, but then like all of the other names that kept coming in, that's what threw me off. Cause I started mm-hmm. writing them all down. Like Jack, Cammy, Dominique, Victor, Theo, Antoine, Irina. Yeah. Then we had Henry. There was just so many different, so many different names to like, and I didn't know who was going to be important and who wasn't. Yeah. So every time like each character mentioned three other characters, I was like, it was who hard. Matters? How are they connected? And then a lot of them didn't end up feeling important. So it felt like a little bit of a waste to remember who everybody was. Mm. That's how I feel. <laughs> so that's I feel my like... thoughts on the perspective. Yeah. Um... Sorry, y'all. My internet was like doing Boost Mobile shit. And I was like, okay. <laughs> you look very clear now. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to move to my iPad. Hopefully that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different connection. That's what I get for living in the middle of nowhere. Oh, man. I'm so sorry. I know how frustrating it is to have to, like, battle with your technology during a live. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What were you going to say, Chanel? Oh, I was going to say I feel I feel so, well, bad, but also not, about the fact that while I was reading the Paris apartment, I just kept thinking about the guest list mm. and, like, because I felt like Lucy did a better job, even though the guest list was like a three star read to me, but it was like a higher three star vibe. But I felt like in that book, she did a way better job of distinguishing her characters and mm. making them all really interesting. Like my issue with that book was not the character work, it was the story. And then here, it's not the story, it's the character <laughs> work. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, let's just toss this into a blender. <laughs> <laughs> like work on that, you know what I mean? And I felt bad mm. kept being like in the guest list, you you could have done this, and in here you could be doing this. So <laughs> so yeah, because there were just too many characters <coughs> popping up, and then I was like, oh, no, <laughs> yeah, it was it was a lot of characters. I will say yeah. I I kind of lost track for a little bit, and then one mm-hmm. point I thought it was Mimi having the affair. And I was yes, like, it's not having I thought affair. that too. Yeah, it it was it was mixing up. Are we spoiling now? Did I miss that? <laughs> We're in no spoilers. Okay, <laughs> but I think this is the transition. So if anybody, okay. I usually keep it like five to ten minutes without spoilers, but we just went into it all. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's get into spoilers now for the last like fifteen minutes. Okay. Um, so get into my main question. Just generally is like, let's each talk about like a plot point or a reveal that made an impact either we liked it or didn't like it um or whatever just because i feel like we need to get through kind of the plot of the book because i i always know there's people in the live show who didn't read it but they want to see <laughs> or there's people who forgot what happened um so also in the comments feel free to like ask any questions if you're confused about something or you wanted to ask us something my only question for the spoiler section is like tell me about a moment in the book that did something for you hated it loved it just a reveal and brie is brie's in it so let's go <laughs> is wait who wants to go i'm ready no you, you are <laughs> okay. Boil away let's get into it one. <laughs> one the first one was when uh the friend i think we found out that you know i think he was bisexual he was kissing the brother and kissing the sister and i was like what plot twist <laughs> and then another one was when we found out that the brother was half alive. I wanted him dead. Yes. I wanted the man dead. Did not feel And I, just, I wanted the man dead. I wanted the police to raid the situation, the house that was just doing human trafficking, essentially. Not it was. Um, and I, I just wanted him dead. And I was kind of upset that he was alive and thriving and that he still survived mm. at the end. I just, those things, I, I had some other things, but y'all go ahead. I feel like for me, the biggest surprises were like, one, finding out what the family's actual business was. Mm. Two, was Ben. Literally everybody 
being basically everybody being in love with Ben. I was like, because somebody <laughs> described him as not attractive. So I was like, you're telling me he's for the community, like doing pro bono and he's not even cute. What is everybody like? And honestly, <laughs> no, because they describe his personality, like the way his personality was described wasn't really giving. And then no. I was like, and he's not hot. No. But he's like, so I was like, are there like 12 people in this town? But it's Paris. So what's going on? <laughs> I was like, you're telling me in Paris, we're all fighting over this unattractive man. <laughs> What's yeah. going on? Yeah. So I was just like really confused. Yeah. Because I was like, there must be something this man has, and I'm not seeing it. I, and then I was like, is it bronzed? <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's not because our girl Mimi said I'm gonna cut the wire of his car right. on his motorcycle. <laughs> girl, like, he just he lightly touched said. your hands and now you jizzing all over the place. No. Like we gotta. <laughs> We gotta make it make sense because to me the mask was not giving. I said, bro, you can't right. be feeling all all moist inside because of this. This man. I was just like so confused because how does he have like his friend? Because his friend liked him. Then the mom and him were having an affair, correct? Speak and on then him. Mimi was having her little vibes where she hacked into his computer. <laughs> And I was like, vibe. you're hacking into a computer for a man who's not even, who has been described as not attractive <laughs> by the people, by the people who are infatuated with him. Like to be like, I guess in love with someone and then to describe them as not attractive. It takes a lot of like inner self, like looking at yourself in the mirror to admit that. <laughs> and now you're hacking. I was thinking maybe it was due to proximity. It's like, who else is but it's Paris. That's the thing though. Like, that's what confused me. We're not in like some tiny town with 15 citizens. Like it's Paris. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, sorry, Meg. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> um. Okay. Okay. I feel like I can't like join in. You guys are like, yeah, and then this, and then, yeah, and then this. I'm just in here and like, like, okay. Like, I, I mean, I, but we want to hear to from fight you too. My piece. <laughs> I feel like it's really cool. No, when... but I can't be like, yeah. I'm just thinking like, oh. <laughs> Meg's okay. like, I thought he was attractive. <laughs> I would have had a crush on Ben too. <laughs> She's like, I would have joined Mimi in that laptop search. <laughs> you would have. <laughs> Mimi. <laughs> I loved the twist when you found out they were all related. And I loved how it mm -hmm. built up to it. That oh, for yeah, me, that was good. I mm. loved it. I like that got me so excited when you're like, <laughs> oh my God, they're all related and they've been like hiding it from her. Like I loved that. That for me was like the highlight of the book. That was like the mm -hmm. best bit. Cause I was like, wow. Yeah, I don't think anybody that. saw that coming that. from the beginning of the book. Cause nobody yeah. would have opened the book and thought all of these five characters are all related. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's totally a good twist. I also yeah. enjoyed that. That was my favorite bit. In terms of like the later twist, here's the thing. I wa <laughs> I wasn't probably the most critical reader of this book as I am with other mm -hmm. books. I was just like, yes, come on, Lucy, let's go. Like, I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Like, I'm so excited. Like, you guys don't understand. I went to a signing of the guest list and she told us about this being the next book. And I've been waiting ever since. I've been waiting ever since. Um, so I just feel like, I just feel like, you know, I was yeah, waiting a long time. with her. Yeah. yeah for sure. So you, you know what it is? I saw a comment, and this is something that I was gonna bring up. The fact that they literally carried their father and nobody thought to look in there. Yeah. That, that surprised annoyed. made me so mad. That because I was like, none me. of you, none of you thought, oh, let me sneak a peek at who's <laughs> dead in here. Let me just There's make no sure. Way. Like, There's no way I would have been like who really right. in here. And then I they buried like, him. Without looking at who he was. Exactly. Like he was, that was like, not the old me dead and gone. <laughs> <laughs> Been traveling like, on that road too long. <laughs> oh yeah, Mimi yeah, that was, that's yeah. My, that's the, that's the my baby moment. from the concierge, right? That that's mm -hmm. that's who she is. That was the so granddaughter, funny. right? Yeah, yeah. So I didn't see like the entire concierge storyline. I, I didn't see any of it coming. I thought there would be something mm -hmm. with concierge because her chapters were so short. Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe she was going to be someone that we already knew. Like, because mm -hmm. we didn't find out her name, I don't think, by the end of the book. Mm -mm. I thought maybe she was going to end up being someone that we had already met. 
Mm. Um, I didn't see it coming that Mimi was her granddaughter, that her daughter died, um, that they were involved in the sex trafficking, human trafficking situation. Um, and then I didn't see it coming that the concierge died at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely I didn't she expect was too- I thought happened. Jess was too um, Dora the Explorer. Like she was trying to figure out stuff too much. And then I felt like she was too trusting. She was too trusting for my like, like what's that movie we read? Not movie, Lord Jesus, book <laughs> that we read one the by one. one. Oh, like, oh, oh I was there. No, the lost ones. I'm sorry. Oh, <clears throat> how distrustful that character was. I was like, that's mm-hmm. me. But this mm. one was like, yeah, let me go in this random basement and this <laughs> door to explore mm. shit. And I was like, girl, this ain't it. And then you went with that grandma. We've learned in the night. What was it? Survived the night that grandmas ain't to be. Trusted. Yeah. No. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> and you're yep. just going to ride with you going to ride with this lady. She could have killed yeah. you. She could have okay. been dead and gone. Just like your brother. Just. Look, I, yes, I right. feel so like the concierge didn't die. The concierge was oh, like injured, injured got yeah. knocked out. Oh, okay. I thought she or died. Okay. <laughs> I feel like so I saw someone in the comments be like, why would you look at the body? And the thing for me, if I'm getting involved in a murder in any I way, like I'm helping you get rid of a body, I want to <laughs> see exactly what the body is. I want to see exactly <laughs> what's in there if I have to be part of this little this little crime. I want to make sure that it's the right, it's what you told me that's in there because I don't trust you because you literally murdered. We're all here together. I think it's also human nature. You know, when people dig in their nose for a booger, most times you look at it. You be like, and then you just (laughs) part of it. You know, just human nature to be curious. Mm. See, here's the thing for me. I didn't really like Jess and lover Mm -hmm. but i don't need Mm -hmm. my like protagonist in these situations to be to have sense i need them to have no sense to get themselves into fun situations that are fun to read and i Mm -hmm. loved i love how like campy and like over the top lucy phonies books like i love like the of course there's a fucking dumb waiter that's going to be like somehow related to the plot of course there's a creepy basement like i love all these like you know, little things that are like so mm-hmm. like stereotypical almost, but I just love, like if if someone else did it, I'd be like, oh, okay. Like, do you know what I mean? But with her, yeah. I'm like, yes! <laughs> I'm like, I love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> no, that makes sense. I have a contemporary author who I really love, Casey West, and her books are literally like a two, like they're just like two teenagers who are like, <laughs> oh, you're li- next door, Billy. And I have a crush on you. And they have, it's like the most senseless anything. And I'm always like, five stars. She did but here's that. the thing, actually, actually. I'm like I read that the with Alexia list. Gordon. I'm like, yes, <laughs> everything you write. I need it. I read the guest list first and gave it five stars. Mm. And then I read the hunting party next. And I gave that mm. two stars. I didn't like it. So I don't have like. you gave it two stars. <laughs> what did everyone I did not read, read the hunting party. And I DNF the guest list. I was over it. Yeah. So I don't have total loyalty. Like I, for some reason, I didn't <laughs> like how it was done in the hunting party. And obviously I'm the outlier here. But I do, do like how it was done here. I don't know. But maybe it's because I was so excited for I don't know. No, I, I'm not going to clarify it. I liked it. So, so far. <laughs> I, I feel like I equally like books that are from, like, a strong, like, ambitious main character yeah. who, like, wants to figure stuff out. And I do equally like just, like, the stupid main character who's like, yeah. la, 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 who knows what's going on? But then, like, some of the decisions that she made, I was just getting angry. And I hate mm-hmm. that reading experience because, like, when she first went to the police station with Nick... Mm-hmm. Or was it Theo? I don't remember. Um, she went with him See. and she didn't speak French and mm-hmm. she was just like trusting him to translate. Oh, yeah. that makes so upset. You just met him. Yeah. If my brother was missing, I would go to every single person in that building, make each of them go and file a report to make sure there's consistency and there's like, mm. I'm not just trusting this man in two seconds. And we're in, aren't we in 2021 or 22? So your phone got Google and you can let it listen to you while you translate to make sure the mug That's is true. saying what the mug is saying. Yeah, I don't understand why she trusted him so like, trusted him that he was probably translating everything because mm. that man could have been like, yeah, I killed him. 
And then the, <laughs> the guy who's translating is like, yeah, so he said he probably left last week. <laughs> like, yeah. what if they were working together? Her yeah. backstory killed me just a little bit, too, because she she was so concerned that, like, her stealing money out of a till because her boss, like, la like flashed his penis at her, like, something happened at her work that she ran away. She was so concerned that, like, something would come back to, like, someone would come to arrest her or something would happen that she wasn't willing to put her name on the police report. That's mm. too much for me. I was like, again, if my brother was missing, like do something a little bit more than being like, well, I just like, you know, I just can't do it. Cause like mm -hmm. my past, but her past backstory wasn't enough. Like there should have been a couple more things. Like we found out she was literally a fugitive. Mm. Something could have happened a little bit more. Yeah. Um, okay. My next, my next question, actually, you kind of already answered. Have you read Lucy Foley before? How does this one compare? Um, and also, would you read from her again? Or, like, what do you hope that she would write again? We know from Bree, she's oh. not going to give it another go. <laughs> <laughs> I have The Hunting Party on my list. And after what Me Meg too. just said, I'm going to be reading that ASAP so I can get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like a practice of the guest list like she a lot of the tropes and like ideas are in the guest list is in the hunting party and she was like kind of figuring it out and then like rewrote it better as the guest list so it's like not rewrote that that <laughs> makes me nervous <laughs> i will admit that makes me nervous but the thing is one thing i've noticed about me is if i read from an author and i've like already read two or three of your books and you only have like five or six it's impossible for me to not want to read all of them because I'm like, there's only like two or three more. I need to read it. Mm. I need to read it, even if it's bad. So if it's not a series, if it's a series, I'm like, I don't care. But if it's like just a bunch of standalones, I'm like, well, I'm interested. Yeah, in I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think I think that's it for me. If you don't have the backstory here, you guys, I forced Brie to read this book with us because every, everybody loved the guest list so much. And Brie just did not vibe with it at all. That I was like, well, now you're going to join my book club and you're going to read this with me and you're going to change your mind about Lucy Foley. It didn't work. But I finished it. I finished it. I didn't DNF it. I said, because I'm not going to lie. I was just like, huh. Like four chapters in or four perspectives yeah. in. I was like. I was tempted you to, need to have a better to, attitude to be about this, and it still didn't give. <laughs> I'm just such a proponent for giving authors another chance that I was like, I'm going to make Brie do it. Send her the book. I was like, <laughs> read it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 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 I, mean, I definitely love giving authors second chances because I think sometimes it can go really well. Mm -hmm. But not in this case. <laughs> Meg, yeah. what, would you, what would you want Lucy Foley to write next? Huh. Well, um, <laughs> I'm trying to, I, mm, imagination. Um, I don't know. For me, um, one of, one of her strengths is like, I really like her settings. I feel like she does like atmospheric yeah. settings really well. So I feel like it's something, I mean, listen, I'm, my job is to review, not to come up with stuff, but <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> I feel like I'd want another like iconic, almost like, I mean, like both the guest list and well, all of her books, also in The Hunting Party, the, the settings are kind of like over the top, exaggerated mm -hmm. versions of themselves. So just another one of those mm -hmm. is what I would like. But I don't know. I agree. Don't really know I what. feel like her settings like are a character. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what I was kind of expecting, though, from the, the apartment building. I thought it would be more ominous. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but I'm kind of glad it wasn't because Lock Every Door gave such those vibes and people are already yeah. comparing this to Lock Every Door. So I'm glad. It yeah. Didn't. That's my um, last question is any book recommendations. Um, that you would give mm. for this, but um, I I wrote down cruise ship as what I would want Lucy Foley to write. Oh, like yes. Ooh. isolated on the sea. Yes. There's a killer. They just toss someone over the boat. Ooh. Yes, I would <laughs> oh read my that. God. Um, I, I feel like only two perspectives. Um, mm -hmm. let's let's chill out, Lucy. Um, she won't do that though. Two, two to three. <laughs> I two to three. I think I like. I think I would want Lucy to write something on a cruise or something very, very cold. Because mm. I think in the guest list, she was really good at describing like the weather. Mm. Like I was cold 
Hunting party is like good. That's like a snow. It's like snowed in lodge kind of situation. Yeah, I'd want party. something that's. Oh, oh, oh no! So she fluffed already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do the cruise and let's kind of be like. This is a great idea. Right. Like, let's channel some. Oh, somebody's I... stuck here. <laughs> I will say though, something I was expecting from this book that I didn't get was when she pitched it. This, I mean, it was a long. This was literally when the guest list was coming out, so it was like when the, this book was probably in its like infancy. But she pitched it as being in this Paris apartment with the courtyard, and she pitched a big part of it being you can see into each other's like windows but you can only see like waist level up so someone might be doing something and you're not sure what they're doing and stuff like that and I feel like that would have been a really interesting element to have in this that maybe got cut that didn't end up being but that I was really excited for that and then it didn't end up happening I was like okay well oh that would have been nice I also Mm. need just a full female cast I don't need no more male (laughs) no more men (laughs) perspective it could be like the um the Ruth Ware, where all the women are like at a bachelorette party in the middle of the woods. Mm. That could be a good vibe. I'm actually, I'm really excited to see, like, even though I didn't love this, I am just so interested to see what Lucy Foley does next. And I will, mm. I will pick it up. So um, last question is any book recommendations or movie recommendations or TV recommendations for people who enjoyed <laughs> this, or even if they didn't, um, anything to compare it to? Chanel, you got anything? Definitely One by One by Ruth Ware. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Absolutely, like 100%. Oh, chef's kiss. Um, I probably have way more. And let me just bring up my story graph because I know, <laughs> <laughs> I know I for sure, I know I for sure have many. So. If you like the setting. I don't know um, what I would compare this to. Oh, like another book I've read. Um, this isn't one that is like about a like a bunch of people, like a group of people. But this one has a lot of like family secrets. If you like that type of vibe, but the other woman by Sandy Jones, S A N D I E Jones, that is about this woman who is she's like in a relationship with this guy, and she's trying to they're like trying to get married or whatever, and his mom. Is it's like mother in law from hell, and she's making this girl's the amount of gaslighting. I was like, did I imagine that? Did did that happen? <laughs> so if you like like fast paced like psychological thriller that has like a lot of family drama that mm. I genuinely did not see coming, I was literally shaking and gasping and throwing. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Like, so I recommend that. Oh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. For sure. The oh. only murders. Yeah. yeah I, haven't, I haven't seen this, but I found it's someone so would mention it. I'm glad they did. Yeah. It's good. There's, a, mm. there's another book that I'm thinking that's related to mm-hmm. what you just said, Chanel. Mm-hmm. And it is, um, he is probably one of my favorite suspense and thriller writers, Brandon mm-hmm. Macy. Um, he's a black man. His book mm-hmm. called Nana. It's giving secrets. It's giving. It's giving a lot of stuff. Horny mm. grandma. I like mm. to always tell people there's a horny grandma in it, which I think is like one of the best parts of the book. Mm. I guess everybody um, got to get them, but yeah. <laughs> I have two more. Um, one of them is this one. I gave three stars, but I still think it's fantastic, and I always like to recommend it anyway because like it has like representation I don't ever see in the thrillers but it's the good sister by sally hepworth i read this with monet and we both were like three stars but the author's coming out with another book and we started screaming and we're like we're gonna read it but this follows <laughs> um twins and one of them is autistic and the other one is um she just has a lot of like obsessive behaviors i don't remember if the author was like Claire that it's like OCD or anything like that. But there's a certain way that she like manages her life and it's part of the storyline. And so the autistic sister decides she's going to help her sister who can't have a baby have one. And she's going to do that by finding some random man at the library that she works at to impregnate her. Mm-hmm. And it when I tell you guys this author, the love story in this book, I never saw coming. And I was literally blushing. I was like, oh my God, right. because the love interest is also autistic. And oh my goodness. I was like, <laughs> but so good. 
<laughs> so good. And then the other one I have is not a thriller, but it's more like a horror, fantasy horror, but I just have to recommend it because, oh my goodness, Small Favors by Aaron A. Craig. Oh, I need to if you love, if you love small town drama, gossiping, being like, what's reality, what's fake, and you love like really tiny and close, like wintry, people are struggling mm. to survive, you're going to love that book. Like, I gave it five stars. It was so good. And I'm planning on reading all of the other Aaron books that I have not read, whatever they are. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, those are my recommendations. <laughs> I think Bree's looking for a book. Yeah, yeah I can't I think it's, what it's called. It's like, I know what it looks like and I can't find it. I'm mad about this. <laughs> God damn. You can uh, always come so back to this video and put it in the comments. Mm. It was like a YA book. It's about this girl. She's a, she goes, um, oh my God. So you've probably heard of it, but I'll describe it and then I'll try to figure it out. But so this girl, I think she got orphaned and then her family, um, her family had a lawyer and she went to go live with them. And the mom was like, I want you to live here and help take care of my daughter. <gasps> You know what I'm talking about? I feel like I do. And that, <laughs> that I would suggest that one. It's YA and G, The Companion. Woo! Yeah, I got it. yeah, yeah. She's like trapped I, and she's supposed to be taking care of the girl. And then it's like a really weird, oh, that book is fire. It's that gave. book is fire for it real. Gave. It left me wanting nothing. Yeah. Oh yes. And shout out yeah. to whatever website I was on that sent it to me for free. So I appreciate appreciate that. Mm -hmm. oh. But yeah, I would say that. I don't know where the companion at. I don't know. Maybe I threw it away. Does it have a spoon on the cover? Yeah. Yes. Okay, it's by Katie Allender. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh. Looking into that, that's a spooky cover. Mm-hmm. Oh. Wow. Megan, if you read it, I need you to just had a Vaxo Raven Okay. No, because I realized I never logged this book. And I know for a fact I read it. Okay, Meg, any recommendations? Um, I was okay. Here's the thing, right? I'm I because I like reading a lot of like I would okay, I would class this as a mystery. People can disagree with me, but I like in my mind, mysteries and thrillers are separate. They can blend. But they're separate rows. And so I feel like some people, when they're like, um, I've heard, like, I've seen like on Twitter stuff, people like just recommend any other like mystery in this book. And I'm like, no, it has to have, it has to be specific. So I was looking at my top um, like murder mysteries or mysteries. Uh, this one isn't a murder mystery, but the, if you're looking for another book that has such like a um, vivid setting where the setting is like such a part of the book, um, the Devil and the Dark Water by Stuart Turton, who is the author of The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, but I didn't like mm -hmm. that one. I like, I really liked The Devil and the Dark Water. It's set on a boat in like the 1600s, and our protagonist is like the Watson to this famous detective who has been imprisoned on the boat. So the detective, who's like really great at figuring stuff out, is stuck. He can't help solve the mysteries of what is happening on the boat. There's like animals being injured on the boat, people going missing, strange symbols appearing. Um, One more time, I, what's the name? Devil and the Dark Water, or The Devil and the Dark Water. I can't remember, one of the two. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it has like a great setting. I feel like the setting, both in time period and the boat itself is really, really well done. The cast isn't too big either. I feel like, you know, it's got like a decent sized cast and I really like the protagonist and he kind of like teams up with the wife of the owner of the ship to like discover the mysteries. And that would be my my recommendation for that. Also when reading it, if I, that one, that's it. I've already <laughs> borrowed it, I'm reading it. <laughs> you sold oh me, God. you sold me. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, here's the thing. Lexi is long. I read it in like a day. You can't it can be done. I it's really good, but it is long. It is a big book. But um also mm. I just want to say, just want to shout out to anyone else who played the Nancy Drew games as a child. 
anyone else anyone else the nancy Drew computer games no okay so there's one <laughs> set there's one set in a fashion house in paris and it just reminded me of the same thing so it made me very happy because i it took me back to my childhood like everyone was complaining about like all the french words in this mm -hmm. but i i mean again i like the the campiness and ridiculousness of it it like made me feel like i was in france again with nancy drew <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my god. My recommendation was gonna be lock every door, but I thought everyone would mention it because everyone keeps mm. comparing this. I actually mm -hmm. don't think they're that similar. No, um, I don't think so like either. The setting of a building with a bunch of characters. Like you don't have mm -hmm. the same cast of characters. I don't think they're that similar. And I love I this. I did book. not like that book. Mm -hmm. But we know that. We Maybe know there's that. something with you and like building apartment buildings and, and things. Apartments. <laughs> I feel attacked. <laughs> I no, but I'm that way with haunted houses. Anytime something's like, this is about a haunted house, I'm like, so it's going to be really good. Yeah, house I love like a good Reefield. building. I do. <laughs> it's the, if the characters do something that reminds me of somebody that I really don't like, I can't move mm. past it. I'd be like, trash. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, my other recommendation, though, one that I actually think is a, is a great comparable title is called Her Every Fear by Peter Swanson. Oh, this is way more similar than Lock Every Door is. Um, it's about, is it about a guy or a girl? A woman moves into a, an apartment at her cousin's apartment momentarily. Cousin's gone. Um, and then she finds like a murdered woman in the apartment building and she's like, did my cousin do it? That's the vibe of this one. It also think... fits for Buzzathon. Uh... Prom. Her uh, buzzword, thud. guys. That's my favorite thing ever. I take that challenge so serious. Me too. I'm like, I'm like so serious. Done. I'm like, yes. Let's get these books read. I'm eighty percent done. I'm ready. With that said, I gave it three stars. But That's I gave this two rating. stars. So, like, if you liked this, I feel like this is a mm -hmm. good place to go. And I don't remember mm -hmm. the twists or anything that happened in it, so I hope it's good. <laughs> <laughs> There's also an audiobook available. I saw. Thank you. Oh. Promo. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that's it. We've been here for an hour. Oh my gosh, you, this that's is what great. happens when there's so many people here. Too, yeah, is I forget that yeah. the more people I invite, like the more we just have to chat about. So um, I really appreciate all you guys joining me, and mm -hmm. there, yeah, that was that was super fun, and I uh, I really love getting together for these live shows, and I know that it takes a lot of like planning and organizing to come to someone else's live show. So I really appreciate you guys reading the book and hanging out with me, and. Um, um. Please to appreciate the people who are here. Their links are down below. Go subscribe, interact, all the stuff. And um, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>